Hello, gentles and ladymen. I am Bison Gaming, and I am joined by my brother Chase MD. Go subscribe to him oh. on YouTube. I said it for yeah. you. Ha. Thank you. Ha -ha. Ha -ha. You beat me to it. I know. Suck it's impressive. It. Yeah. And uh, today we are ranking heavy cavalry. Oh. Um, yes. All right. Uh, you sound surprised, Chase. I didn't know that's what we were doing. Oh, okay. Did you? What, what did you suspect we were doing? I had no idea. Ah, okay. Uh, anyways, couple notes before we get started. As with all things, the R tier list is scaled around the B tier, uh, which means that is where the majority of good quality serviceable units go. Uh, exceptional one, exceptional units go up above, and not so exceptional units go down below. Additionally, these we are ranking these units against each other, so which means there will always be S and D rank, because I had some uh, uh, some confusion about that on like Mercenaries and Outlaws, where some people were like, none of these units are S tier. I'm like, well, we are ranking them against each other. So yes, there are. Uh, and yeah, with all that out of the way, I don't think there's any other, uh, there, there's any other things to get started here. Oh, right. Uh, we are looking at uh, trainable units that civilizations can get access to either through cards or through their base mechanics or uh, techs and stuff like that. Uh, so if your favorite cavalry unit isn't here, there's probably a reason for it. Um, but it, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and get started. Where's a good place to start? Do you think? Um, I mean, we could start with my main. Sweden Hazar. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's start with Sweden Hussars. Uh, I know you love Sweden so much, so. Correct. Uh, yeah, the, it's what I know best in what, terms of civs, so. Yeah. Sweden Hussars have a, have a... Sweden has a ton of buffs for cavalry, do they not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have... They have, uh, two, they have two age two cards. They used to have one age three card. Did um, they take away cav combat for Sweden? They turned it into range cav combat. Oh, so it affects so... it affects goon it affects their hack appellate only now. Oh, that's so lame. Um, but they also have fin horses. They have um, in H four. They've got the mark march of the hack appellates, which I think increases. Yeah, I think that increases all calf damage speed. as well, or calf speed. Yeah, uh, and then allows hack appellates to be trained early. But that's besides the point. Oh, hack appellate are on this list since the since the last time it was done. Yeah, they got moved to the Dragoon list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I mean, I'm in terms of Hussar, I think Sweden Hussar are one of the best in the game. In terms of all heavy cavalry, I don't know that they're S tier, but they're definitely A. One one of the the big notable things about the Sweden Hussar is one, you get that that um that that early arsenal, so you can get the extra ten percent HP really early, and that's that's a big Correct. boost when you have three hundred and twenty base HP. It, in in terms of upgradability, there's not much better than Sweden's Hussar. And Sweden is one of the few civilizations that can afford Hussar in the in the early game relatively easily, and that's a pretty big deal. Correct. Not, not to mention Sweden's whole you know Sweden is based around uh, their musketeers, and so the Hussars bear really well with them. I think the Sweden Hussar is very strong. I think it's a good solid A tier A two cav. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know that it's the best in terms of heavy cavalry, but it's probably the best Hussar, or one of. Yeah, it's it's, it's up there for the Hussars, for sure. Alright, um, let's see here. Let's talk about one of my units now, the Coyote Runner. Uh, I have previously given the, key, the Coyote Runner a pretty low ranking, however... Um, with the nerf to skirmishers, the Coyote Runner has coincidentally gotten better. Now that is true for all of these units here, but as Aztecs only as Aztecs only uh, cavalry unit that they even remotely have access to, uh, the, the, the Coyote Runner has gone up more has gone up significantly in importance in the Aztec roster, and I've even started using these guys. Uh, to greater effect in my normal games, and I'm nor and I used to not really be a fan of them so much. Uh, you can actually fight skirmishers with these dudes now. Yay! <laughs> they actually fight what they're supposed to. Yeah, correct. Um, they, they they do get really fast though. They are they are faster than a hussar once you get their upgrades in. 
Oh my god, I hate how fast they are. <laughs> 6.88 speed, baby. In age two. Once you send a card. It's great. Uh they are they, they are nice. Uh, I, I will say I, I don't think they are the craziest cav in the game, you know? Uh, they don't have the craziest stat spread in the universe. I think the Chimu Runner is just a better unit overall. However, I recently did a comparison between uh, the Coyote, the Chimu, and the Shuttle, and uh, I, I kind of realized in that video just how much the Coyotes and the Chimu completely outpace the Shuttle once you get to age, well, once you get to late age three or four. And uh, yeah, I, I am pleasant. I have been pleasantly surprised by this unit, and I think it's in the B tier. Sure. You got to make more of those videos, by the way. It's off topic, but uh, the, the comparison ones. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty fun. So what's next? Uh, let's see here. How about uh, let's let's throw one that we can easily let's let's do one that we can easily and casually throw in the S tier to to give okay. a good idea of like what what belongs in the S tier, huh? Okay. I don't think anybody will have any issues with us throwing the Chinako into S tier. Yeah, that's uh, that's up there. Yeah. Okay, so the Chinako Mexico unit it is a Lancer type unit, meaning it has multipliers against uh, infantry. Now it has a negative multiplier against heavy infantry to counter this up, so it really only counter counters light infantry. Uh, but this is like a, a Naginata Rider style uh, unit where. Uh, this is like a Naginata style unit where it has uh, it has multipliers against in infantry, but it still doesn't have like a terrible attack, so it can fight relatively well against cavalry, which is one of the things that makes the Naginata Rider so strong. However, what makes the Chinako even stronger, despite having everything that the Naginata Rider has, is that you, know, you also have the Creolos upgrades that increase your multiplier against infantry, and uh, you all, the Chinako also just casually has a multiplier against heavy cavalry, so it can just fight on even turns with Hussar, despite also being a Lancer unit, which is just complete bullshit. Like, this unit is so nuts. <laughs> and they have been for a while. Yeah, and there's no signs of them being nerds. I think they are Mexico's best unit, in all honesty. And they, they, they are showing no signs of getting nerfed anytime soon. <laughs> all right, well, you know, now's the time, devs, if you're listening. Yeah, right? They've, they've been pretty much OP since Mexico came out. I've, I've encountered Mexico players who do nothing but monocomp Chinacos, and it doesn't matter how many goons you make, you know, they just fucking run you down. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. With that stupid swinging thing over their head that goes slower when they move slower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You gotta swing in slow motion, you know? Yeah, of course. It's funny, because you would think when they slow down, they would be able to focus more on the swinging. <laughs> <laughs> it's just tied to their animation, which is hilarious. Okay, let's see here. How about... Let's talk about uh, Kanya Horseman. Uh, okay. Um, just I don't think they're very out. good. Personally, I mean, the the how the how buffs, I think, make them a little bit better. Um, in this recent patch, but I I don't think I mean I, I don't think they're that good. No, the in the strongest thing about Kanya Horseman is that there's you get a shipment of four of them in age two. And how Nishoni can get to H2 really fast, so you can get ver a very strong rating force very, very early on in the game. Yeah. Um, however, the the issue with Kanya Horsemen is that they're not especially tanky for a cav, and they're not especially powerful for a cav, and they cost wood, which is the mm -hmm. worst. They cost, I think they cost like 100 wood per unit, so it's like really bad. Uh, and, and so the, the, these guys just feel awful. There's no way to change their coin, their their wood cost to coin either. So these guys just feel awful, and you never find yourself wanting to make these past the second age. Good thing Howd never goes to age three, so you're fine. <laughs> A lot of Howd players go into age three. That's how they get their their, their their that's how they get their super good skirmisher and goon. But yeah, I think well, Kanye Horseman is an easy C tier. It's yeah, it's not useless. It's not useless because they do have that that four Kanye Horseman card for rating. But man, you know, 
If it weren't for that, they'd definitely be in the D tier. If Eve How didn't have that shipment. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see here. I don't know where to go next. <laughs> Pick something. All right. Randomly. Uh, sours for uh, sours for um, India. These guys are uh, two pop units, but they really feel like one pop units. They are so hilariously fragile. Uh, they are camel cavalry, so they are lancer cavalry too. Uh, they have the same. Uh, they, they have the the same base attack as a Spanish lancer, which is twenty, which is not good. But they have like terrible multipliers. They have only a two times against infantry, and then even that's ruined against heavy infantry. So these guys are fragile. They do no damage. They uh, still cost two population. Uh, despite this, they are faster than other cavalry, but like it doesn't matter when you're so fragile that even skirmishers with this nerf can still shoot you down. <laughs> That's a big issue with the Zan with the sours. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't see them in too many India player compositions, to be honest. You really don't. They're more of a specialty case. Uh, the, the, you, you use them when you really need something in age two because. You know, when you when you get to age three and above, you know you're going to be sending the Mahout shipments. Uh, you're going to be getting Mahouts with your age up, or you're just going to be training Mahouts. You know, there's very little reason that you would want to bring Sours into battle. Mm. After all, the Mahout is also a Lancer, but it's got better base damage and area of effect, and it's tanky. It's slower though. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, well, that's yeah. It's a trade off, and I think most people will take health over yeah. anything else. Yeah, it's it's the same. It's it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just one of those. Things. I'm gonna put the sour in the D tier. I it's one of my least favorite units in the game, and I like love playing India. All right, let's talk about the Step Rider. Step Rider is an interesting unit. It is China's H2 cavalry unit. They are Lancers, believe it or not. They have an infantry multiplier. Uh, they also have extremely high siege for a one-pop H2 cavalry unit. They have like 25 siege. It's kind of nuts. Yeah, it is up there. Uh, which, you know, having fast moving, uh, like having fast moving 25 siege is, is quite good. Uh, I definitely think the Step Rider is like... A, a, a fairly okay unit you know it, it kind of it's one of those it's like the strelet of the hussar you know you're not going they're not going to win against anything else here you know they're going to get their ass kicked but they do their job when they need to and when they when they close in on a when they close in on a big group of skirmishers if you have a big group of steps then you know it's going to turn out relatively okay yeah uh but yeah you see them a lot in in chinese player compositions uh you know they can get some good raids one of the um, big issues i have with just most china units in general is uh batch training i uh, i despise it's not, not i mean banner army training i despise banner yeah. army training uh because it means especially for a unit like the step rider which is so individually weak that you need lots of them in order to make a difference like this is going to require making double the banner armies compared to just batches of five that you could have made, you know. Sure. And that's going to be a whole it's, lot of excess units. You need, like, two batches to get, like, four of them or something, it, so... It's it's the whole China conundrum of, oh my god, my ar my my enemy just monocomped skirmishers. I need to monocomp... Or no, my, my army... My enemy just monocomped cavalry. I need to, to monocomp goons. Wait, no, I can't! You know, it's... Mm-hmm. It's, it's the whole China thing. So I, I, I'm going to put the step rider here. I, I, I think I, it's actually, I would, yeah. I would lean more toward B, personally. But... B? Okay. You think? I mean, they're, they're serviceable. They work when you need them. Okay. We'll, we'll put them in B for now. Right, we now have a unit at every tier, which will kind of give us a good, uh, a good, like, baseline for, uh... Um, sure for uh i mean they, they they do work but i still think they're less than the average than the good quality average units well it's your tier list put them where you need them i'll put them at the top of c because i i don't think they are like 
a good quality solid unit you know they they do their job but their job is but they don't do their job super well you know mm-hmm okay all right uh let's see here I know, uh, let's talk about let's, let's go through the hussars how's that okay sure uh let's see let's talk about the french hussar Another Hussar that can I think we both of us can easily agree goes in the A tier. Uh, probably even you ahead think? of Sweden. Oh yeah, oh yeah. France is like go ahead of Sweden. I think Sweden's Hussar get a bad rap because they're underused. I, I legit think Sweden probably has the best Hussar in the game well, after upgrades. Well, for one thing, France does have the three upgrade cards because you know, they, they 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 took one away from Sweden. Uh, but they also have the thoroughbreds, which reduces their cost as well. Um, once once they get into age four, and then they can also they also get the early arsenal with the free tech. Uh, they or no, they get an early arsenal and they get a free tech, I think. Whereas you have to pay for yours. Uh, yeah, but and then France is the other economy in the game. It, it's like the only other one of the few other economies in the game besides Sweden that can pretty easily afford SRs in the second age. Okay. In fact, I think the only reason, like, like the, the the Hussar is a very solid unit, I think, and uh, for 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 France, and I think Sweden is like the second best Hussar for sure. I think most of the Hussars I mean, are going to end up in the B tier, but like with with uh, I mean with um, uh, not thoroughbreds, uh, Finn horses and March of the Hack Pellets, you do have to consider that Sweden does have those if you're going to compare the two units. Yeah, of course. What does Finn Horses do? Can you remind me? Uh, it, it's, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's an age four buff to, um, to all cav. Okay. That, that Sweden has. All it right. might do train time. It might be train time. I'm not sure. Gotcha. Or HP. I'm not. I don't. I don't know. I think. Yeah. I think Sweden def has a super strong Hussar. I think it's probably the second best after France. Okay. Um. I think most of the other, most if not all of the other Hussars are going to end up in the B tier. That's probably where I would put them all. Yeah. Except for maybe Malta, but. Or British. Really, I wouldn't put Malta. I I'd definitely put Malta in the B tier, but like a strong B tier, but B tier. All right, let's, well, figure, let's talk up, about it. Let's talk about they, it. They they upgrade with every shipment you send, so they're just automatically better. No, uh, they do not. These are uh, these are order hussars. They oh, are not. Right. They they are not a multi. They are not one of Malta's actual units. So uh, that's true. They don't gain benefit from the HP buff. Uh, they also have no upgrade cards whatsoever, and they're ten percent more expensive. The only card that affects them just makes them cost normally instead of and they well bonus. they do shadow tech so they do shadow they're... tech that is an important note and uh, also importantly and this is something that i i always want to bring up is that um the the hussar uh, the the multi hussar is actually the best early game raider in the entire game and the reason i say that is because um so people think when people think about good early game raiders they think about like ulans right uh, yeah. Ulans, though, they actually kill Hussellers and only one less hit than a normal Hussar. Normal Hussars take seven hits to kill a Settler, just barely. And then they overkill by almost all of their next attack, right? Uh, but Ulans end up... Uh, so they take seven hits, and Ulans, they do six hits to kill a Settler, which is really great, right? Uh, and and uh, they're going, but, but the thing is, their six swing just massively overkills the seller. But it's still six swings, and that's an improvement. Uh, the the Malta Hussar though has the ten percent baseline stat buff, where it has thirty three attack instead of thirty, and that thirty three attack is just enough to enter the six hit kill threshold. So you end up with the the, the Malta Hussar, which is just as efficient. At killing settlers as the Ulan, but way tankier. So it's like the best early game raider in the game, and it also shadow decks. It's great. I I love going early game Hussar as multi. I think it's one of. I, I think it's actually a really strong choice. That said, they don't scale into like the end game even remote. Well, <laughs> except for when they shadow tech. 
Yeah, they they are strong when you when you just when you have just aged, and then after about a minute, you you might as you you might as well just have any other SR. <laughs> uh, you're the multi-main, so you know. Yeah, uh, I think they're. I think the Coyote Runner is going to be towards the bottom of B tier. I think the his, the the multi hussar is definitely ahead. Of them. Sure, could agree with that. All right, you play Spain. Tell me about the Spanish SR. Uh, I would rather have Lancers, but, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, the Spanish SR is good. I, it's, it, it does its job. There's not much to it other than that, to Spain, be honest. Spain gets, uh, the three core combat upgrade cards as well, right? Fit uh, two in H2 and one in H3? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't use Spanish as hard that often. Usually, I usually I just have Lancers, and Lancers have the Caballeros card. Now, Spain, of course, have the magical ability to upgrade anything in the goddamn universe. Uh, it's, it's it's kind of their gimmick. Uh, and so I will say that the pairing uh, the uh, pairing the unction uh, with the missionaries with a actually fast moving uh, hussar is, I think, like really really solid. Uh, however, one of the things you tend to want to pair uh, Hussars with in a unit composition is Musketeers, right? And Spain has Musketeers, but they they tend to not have like super late game Musketeers. You know, they're they're, they're they they don't really they, they don't really have any any Hussar uh, Musketeer upgrade cards. The closest they have is uh, their Church card, which reduces w w which reduces the movement speed in exchange for hit points. Which, which is terrible. It's not great. <laughs> it is so bad, and that's even that's locked behind a card. I mean, so the even, classic even the though, classic uh, late game Spain composition is like Rod Lancer, or you know, and you can make Musk and Barry, you know, Barry Falconets in in the Musk mass, but like Rod Lancer is the classic non Purishiki, non you know Fi into Soldado Spain composition. So. Mm. Um, and the, yeah, there's there, there's also that issue of uh, the Hussar just kind of being outclassed by the Lancer, whereas I feel like the French Hussar, even though it is outclassed stat-wise by the Cuirassier, is still viable because it's so much cheaper than the Cuirassier. Yeah. Well, I mean, Spain's Hussar is definitely B tier, but yeah. once we get to the Lancer, like, it's going to go ahead of it. Stat I mean, just, wise, uh, just, put, just put the Lancer ahead of it automatically right now. We don't need to talk about that anymore. <laughs> stat wise, it's probably on par with the French and Sweden one, but it just doesn't pair quite as well with their military. So I think just yeah. just just put it in B and then put the Lancer right in front of it. <laughs> you think the Lancer is also B tier? Yeah. Well, it's above. It's above the. Um. Top of B tier for sure. I've had these guys just wreck units. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the, the Spanish Lancer. The Spanish Lancer, uh, relatively tanky cavalry unit. It starts out with its bases in age three, which is pretty cool, but its base, its base HP is like 350 or something like that, right? Uh, which is, is larger than that of a Hussar. However, because their base stats are in age three, the Hussar is actually tankier in age two, in age three than the, the Lancer. It's just that the Lancer scales better into the end game in terms of tankiness, uh, which is and kind of interesting. The Spanish cards that they have for them too, like I said, mentioned earlier, Caballeros. Yeah. Uh, now the, the Spanish Lancer's gimmick is that it, it has a multiplier against infantry, but unlike other Lancer type units, it doesn't have any negative multipliers against heavy infantry. So its multiplier against infantry is actually effective versus all infantry, which means it can actually pretty reliably fight things like pikemen uh, and uh, things like pikemen and, and musketeers and melee. Uh, however, in exchange, not really. However, in exchange, uh, it does have the it, you know, it's, it trades with them rather than just outright losing, I should say. Uh, however, in exchange uh, for this, it has a very low base attack of only 20 and loses to pretty much every Hussar equivalent in the game. So there are three like there are three core types of uh, cavalry units. You have the Lancer types, which have lower attack and a high and with a multiplier against infantry you have the bonkers as i call them which fit which are the the hussar types which are just uh high stat spread 
with nothing to show for it, and they just bonk, and that's all they do. Uh, and you have the Crusier type, which the, the big boys, which have AoE. The, those are the, like the three core archetypes, and the Lancer is the prime example of everything that's strong, but also everything that's weak about the Lancer archetype, and that's that they just lose so heavily to the bonk type gal in particular. They just lose to other Gav. And that's that's the reason they're not going to go any higher than the B tier. But they do their job really well. If, if mm -hmm. your enemy goes to the... If you find a Skirmisher mass, that mass is dead. Like, there's no stopping you. Yep. You don't even need that many Lancers. You really don't. No, they just wreck. <laughs> yeah, they <It's> wreck. <laughs> All right, Italy Hussar, what are your thoughts? Uh, they're all right. I, I don't use them too much. But they're good. I mean, they're serviceable. They get the job done. If you need a Hussar unit, they, you got a Hussar unit. Yeah. They, they, I mean, Italy is interesting because you're you're looking for techs for them anyways. So you know, pretty much by default, they have higher line of sight than other Hussar uh, because you're getting the church tech for it. I'm pretty sure Italy uh, have which, Cap which, Combat in Age Three as well, which is pretty nice, as well as yeah. the uh, the fifteen percent boost to melee damage for all land units in Age Two. Uh, they pair well with Musketeers, which is also great because that's one of the units Italy likes to make. Um, yeah, and like this is going to be one of your core support units when you're making things like Papal Lancers, mm -hmm. in order to, to buff out and, and pad out your your uh, your cavalry mass. So I, I think very highly of the Italy Hussar. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a Sweden Hussar. It's not a Lancer. It's it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's when its primary function is to make your Papal Lancer mass bigger. Uh, <laughs> it's it's not the greatest in the universe, but it's very solid. You know, I yeah. I think very highly of the Italy Hussar. I think very highly of every unit in the B tier. And I think that is that is the, the point of the B tier. You know, it's a unit that you think highly of that does its job, but isn't exceptional in its fields. You know, sure. Like, it isn't the star of the show. The, the, the Italy Lancer is not the star of the show. No. Definitely not. All right, let's talk about USA. Hussars. They are normal Hussars. Uh, you can get them to be cheaper in Age 3, and that's really cool. It also comes with a free vet upgrade, so that's really nice. Uh, however, if you send Georgia Hussars, you do need to make a lot of Hussars for the card to end up, like, being worth it and back to a value of a thousand, so you better be making lots of Hussars if you send that card. Uh, which I'm assuming you are, if you, if for, for the purposes of this tier list. Uh, and, you know, the, the Hussars are, the, the USA Hussars are cheaper, but they're not that cheaper. And again, they are just baseline Hussars. The only upgrades you get are, like, the, the Arsenal upgrades. Uh, other than that, their only combat card that they get access to is actually locked in Age 5. Uh... <laughs> You mean four? No, five. It's a federal card. Oh. They, it, if you age to age five with Florida, of all of all states, you get a fifteen percent attack and HP boost, plus a five percent speed boost and a train boost, a train speed boost. Gotcha. However, the other card associated with Florida just gives you a bunch of cattle, and who the fuck needs that in age five? So nobody, nobody ages to five with Florida. <laughs> But it's still a Hussar and a Hussar Bonx, and because of that, I think it, it I think it belongs in uh, the, the bottom of B tier. I think the Coyote Runner is a little better than the, the USA Hussar. All right. The Coyote Runner can at least have its wood cost be turned into it can, it can have its wood cost be turned into coin too, which is really nice. It's really convenient. All right. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see. Dutch Hussars. Thoughts? Uh, I mean, I think Dutch goes Reuter instead, so. <laughs> it's true, but I have seen a lot of Dutch players go with Hussar in Age 2 because they have all the coin income they need for us. They just focus most of their settlers on food. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, with the change to the Dutch that um, the last two, or like, I guess it was two patches ago now. Well, no, one patch. You know, fixing Dutch states army, Dutch state army, Dutch states army. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Dutch states army. Um, but like, 
Dutch unit comps are a lot less, you know, skirm reuter anymore, uh, especially with the heavy or the light infantry nerf. So yeah, they they uh, still don't have a musketeer, which hurts them a lot, except for Dutch states army where they get Highlanders. Uh, yeah, but uh, point point being, with the recent changes in the patches in the 2023 patches it's not quite so guaranteed that dutch just goes skirm reuter anymore so and if they're looking um, for a good support unit one that they can easily afford is the hussar i don't think they have very many combat cards for cavalry uh if any but like you know the hussar is it's it's an easily affordable choice for dutch and i sure. it, and be, just because it's easily affordable i think it's better than the usa one so we're gonna put them right right here Ah, uh, right here. Yeah. Okay. And we have only two left already. Portugal and British. Which one do you want to talk about first? Uh, we can talk about Brit. Okay. Personally, I think British are the only other civilization that I'd consider putting their Hussar in the A tier for. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If there was going to be another one, it would probably be the Brit. They have Royal Guard Hussars, they have three combat cards, uh, they have a Royal Guard triple-carded Musketeer to pair with it, like, they have everything going for their Hussars, they really do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they do. So, yeah, there's, there's really not much else to say. Probably around here. And mm -hmm. lastly is the Portugal one. Probably just put it in B2. Yeah, we'll just throw it in the middle of B. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really matter. It's just, it's a Hussar. It bonks. We've talked enough about them. Uh, they recently nerfed the Dragoon Combat from uh, that, that, that Portugal had. Dragoon Combat used to affect Hussars and Dragoons, but they've since uh, changed it so that it affects Dragoons and Dragoons and Lineros, which are like a revolt units. So that kind of sucks. Yeah. yeah. They lost out on another like 15% that they used to have. Dragoon Combat used to do 20% for Dragoons and 15% for Hussar. Not so much anymore. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk about... Cossacks. Okay. Thoughts? Uh, probably, probably a B-tier unit again. Uh, I mean, you get two shipments of them in age two for Russia, so you can raid with them. I mean, they're the classic, it's the classic Russia build, right? Is villagers into Cossacks into wood and then raid and then Strelid army, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think that, yeah, the, the fact that they have two shipments of these guys in age two, a shipment of five and a shipment of four, uh, these guys are one pop units. Uh, it, it, the, the fact that they get two shipments of them is, is like insanely good. Uh, yeah. but these guys are one pop units, uh, and they have, but they have much higher stat than like any other one pop cab unit in the game. Like they have uh, higher stats than like, uh, Shibu runners or, or coyote runners, for example. Uh, they kind of like don't have any upgrade cards, which is kind of weird. Uh, they no, have very, they, they have like very few upgrade cards, if any. Um, but they have, but they have such great bases for an age one cav unit. You can kind of just get away with using them, no matter what the age is, anyways. Yeah. Um, and like they, they're always going to be out in the early game. They're always going to be raiding. Uh, like these guys, I think, are very solid units. Uh, they also don't have their role taken away by the Opry once you get to age three, which I think is really cool. You know, they still function as the heavy cab unit of Russia even after you upgrade Opry, even after you get Opry's, which is, you know, something that I can't say the same about for like the Spanish Hussar, for example. Yes. Uh, I think the Cossack is actually pretty strong. I was, I, I'm considering putting it either at the top of B or the very bottom of A. I would put it at the top of B if okay. you're gonna of those of those two places. I would put it. I would put it there. Gotcha. I don't think it's better than the Lancer necessarily. E enough to warrant putting it in A tier mm -hmm. over the Lancer. All right. 
Uh, USA, let's talk about the two Ulans. USA Ulans first. Uh, they're bad. They're really bad. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, let's talk about Germany first. Because th th that'll be a more interesting conversation. Germany Ulans. They come with the civilization bonus of getting two Ulans free with every shipment. Uh, they have really low HP. Um, they, they, they are two pop units, but they have less HP than like even the Cossack, I'm pretty sure. They have like 190 HP. Uh, they have really high base attack. I think their base attack is 38, or maybe it's 41. Do, do you remember off the top of your head? No. Okay. Well, they have not like, at all. They have really high base attack, and you know these guys are going to be like your premier raiders, uh, just because Germany just kind of gets them for free, just for existing. Um, they are, uh, however, the, I have an issue with the Ulan, and that is that it is just not tanky, and it, the, as a result, it kind of loses against most of the other bonk type cavalry units in the game, uh, and it's very difficult to keep them alive. It, it, it's not so difficult in the early game, but especially like late age three. Uh, and on, at late H3 and onwards, it's very difficult to keep a, a Ulan mass alive unless you specifically have an age advantage over your opponent. Uh, and you've kept them in H2 for a while. And that's kind of one of the rough things with the Ulan. Is, and it's one of the things I always say is there is not a single Germany player who doesn't wish they got two Hussars instead of those Ulans. And, and it doesn't wish that they couldn't train U Hussars instead of Ulans. Like, they, but, like, Germany uh, has all the cavalry cards to go with it, too. The, the Ulan, like you can't, you can't uh, discount the the Ulan though. Like they are good. Yeah, they are in good the units. right situation. They like, are good units, especially. But they would just be infinitely better if they were hussars. They they got forty five percent in combat upgrades. It's insane. Well, well, yeah. Then the sieve would be broken. I know. <laughs> so we can't have that. It's just one can't, of those things. I think... can't be... I, I do think the Ulan is a good unit. I just... I wish it was a Hussar. I really do. It's... They're, they're so not tanky. And it's just... Yeah. They, I mean, they don't really need to be. They also right? don't have a Musketeer to pair with, which sucks. Where are you putting them? Uh, I really don't know. Part of me wants to put them in C, but a part of me thinks, no, they're not that bad, you know. They're not that bad. They're not they're that bad. I think very good, they, very serviceable it, units. Yeah, we'll put them in B tier. It, we'll put them, like, right here next to the Coyote Runner, I suppose. Okay. The USA one is bad, though. Um, <laughs> a lot of people really like the Pulaski's, uh, the, the, the Pulaski's army shipment. Uh, but how I was saying, you know, it ain't no Hussar, and there's no player who wishes that they could make Ulans instead of Hussars. This applies to this unit right here, because USA can make Hussars. <laughs> so there's no reason to get these guys. The only thing that's strong about the Pulaski, uh, about the USA Ulan, is that when you get, ac you get access to them by getting a shipment of 10 of them. That's it. That's the only reason, and that shipment costs a thousand resources. It's not worth it. No, it's, it's bad. No, it's awful. Uh, C tier, for sure. They, they they at least pack a punch with that initial shipment. You know, maybe we'll throw them in D tier, above, above the sour. But like, there's no point. You have Hussars, they do the job better. Just, just use Hussars. Could be good in a pinch, but uh, yeah. If, if you've got the wood lying around, but not not make a build order around the specific card worthy by yeah. any means. Good lord! the The only thing I could even remotely see you maybe doing this for, it, it, like shipping the Ulans for, is uh, if you're doing a, a if you're doing like a double a, a, a nine minute two fort strategy for USA, which I, I've crafted. I don't. I haven't actually made a video for that. I don't think I've ever made a video for that build. I, I might. I might revisit that. Um. But a 9 minute 2 fort? Yeah, maybe you take Ulans, but you know what else can train for your forts? Hussar. Just train those instead. You know. Fair. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's talk about another USA unit. Magyar Hussars. The ones you get in H4 with the, uh, with, with the Kovats Legion. Uh, these guys are much, much tankier than the, the than the, uh, the, the normal stars. These guys have, like, an insanely high amount of HP, but then just, like, normal amounts of attack. 
and they're three pop which means they're relatively balanced you know uh they they can only be trained from forts though and they're also age four locked in usa behind a 2000 resource costing shipment which uh sucks <laughs> just a little bit you get a huge army of these guys. I think you get like nine of them on the shipment, which uh, is not very much HP when it's Ulans, but it's a lot of HP when it's Magyar SRs, you know. Uh, but you can only train them from forts, which which sucks. They are expensive. They are three pop units as well. Uh, I I generally find that just having a normal Hussar is better, uh, and. And being age four locked is, is like between the two. If you have the option of training the two, you want to make the Magyar Hussar. But being age four locks behind a two thousand resource shipment is just the worst. Well, in considering the average game length, yeah. right, of eighteen minutes and twenty seconds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, most, mo unless you're doing a specific like strategy, or the game goes longer than average, you're not getting to age four. Like, the best way to use these guys would be if you were to, like, do a, two, a, a nine minute two fort fast fortress with USA, and then also do it with Indiana to get the Indiana Mammoth improvement tact and get to H4 by, like, 14, 15 minutes. Yeah. And that, that would be a pretty, that would actually be a really fun build, possibly, to go with, like, a fort style, uh, uh, to go with a defensive double fort fast fortress into fast industrial, semi fast industrial, and then send Kovats and Washington's Legion and go Hussar Grenadier. That would be really fun. Hmm. I might, I might that, make that. <laughs> actually, that could be a fun build. That sounds interesting. I think there's there's more room for USA innovation that we've just found. All right, uh, we're out of USA Cav units now, so that's cool. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. You want to talk about the Shadow Warrior? Sure. Thoughts? Uh, everybody thinks, well, I won't say everybody, but there's <laughs> been much concern over the thought that they may have been busted uh, after the last patch. But um, I have yet to see, well, they're on a sieve that has a really low pick rate anyways. <laughs> and judging by your video where you compared them they're not as broken as, as it people, would appear yeah. they might be so 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 shuttle warriors are like lancers but for um but but for shock infantry so this is um they are the lancers of the chimu runner coyote runner and shuttle warrior parrot um which is pretty cool uh, they have a base attack of only 12, but it's at 1.25 speed, and it has a multiplier against all infantry rather than just heavy. So if they're fighting any form of infantry, their damage is actually around that of the Chibu Runner, where it's about 20 damage every second and a half, which is really good considering they are the tankiest of the units as well, with 100 and I think 65 base HP. Uh, as opposed to the 120 of the Chimu Runners. So these guys, against infantry specifically, do outperform both the Coyote and the Chimu Runner. The Coyote and the Chimu Runner are about on par with each other. I just think the Chimu Runner is better. Uh, now, the the Shuttle Warrior is uh, the slowest of all of these. They have no speed upgrades, really, that they can get ac that they get access to, and uh, the Chimu Runner and the Coyote Runner just leave these guys in the dust with uh, tons of speed upgrades. Uh, these guys are, but these guys, but the the shuttles are stuck at six speed, which which does suck. Yeah. Um, and especially like once you get to H three, they have a shuttle warrior combat car, which really helps out. Um, but at, once you get to late H three, Aztecs are going to have their ten warrior priests if they hadn't had them already, and Chibu runners are just going to have you know all of their uh, all of their combat cards and. They're probably going to have some Lanas that they can throw on the plaza as well. And the plaza really makes all the difference. And it just leaves the Shawl Warrior in the dust to a point where, like, both the Coyote and the Chibu vastly out damage and outscale the, the Shawl Warrior, even while the Shawl Warrior has its multiplier and extra attack speed. And, uh, like, for, for early game, if you, if you're, if your opponent is making purely infantry and no cavalry at all, the Shadow Warrior is probably the strongest of the three, uh, it, at least at age two. But that really starts to change quickly once upgrade cards start coming in, and once age three, and especially once age three comes around. And in age four, you might as well just pretend they don't exist. 
Um, so C? Yeah, C tier. I think they're better than the Kanye Horsemen, probably. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. And what were there? Let's talk about the Chibi Runner. Chibi Runner has uh, twenty attack and one hundred and and uh, has twenty attack and one hundred and twenty less HP. It actually ties with the Coyote Runner uh, in terms of combat ability. Uh, however, I think the Chibi Runner is better because although they tie with the Coyote Runner, they are better for raiding because they take much less hits to kill a settler, uh, and they uh, and they also have a button ability. Uh, that recharges just like the sweetened one where they get uh, a whole extra point of movement speed they go from six to seven uh and and they also can't be snared during that time where it's active so it's really great uh they they they, you know, they got the plaza dance they have all sorts of upgrade cards these guys are good these guys are real good uh eight tier yep yeah probably they even cost coin at base and you don't need a card in order to swap them from wood to coin <laughs> coyote runner Yeah, that's that's where these three place. They're also okay. slightly more upgradable because uh, Inca can get the native Amer the, the native American allies card, the American allies card. Yeah, with the twenty percent combat boost from the Zap attack. All right, let's see here. Any units you want to go over in particular? Oh, we can go over the Axe Rider. All right, let's do the Axe Rider. Right in front. Yeah, I uh, I like the Axe Rider. It's a really good unit, Lakota. It is. Uh, now these guys have um, really solid. They just have really, really solid HP. It's not quite Hussar levels. The stars are really tanky, uh, but they have much higher attack. Don't they have like thirty-five base attack? Uh, it's pretty. It's up there. Yeah, and then Lakota also have like all the cavalry upgrade cards in the universe. Uh, they never, as Lakota, you never have to worry about population. So they're solid in the early game too, just because you can. You don't need to make houses, which takes up a huge chunk, which is a huge issue for most other age two cavalry players, you know, like uh -huh. the Axe Rider is just really good. It is the premier bonker cavalry unit. I think it is the premier bonk cavalry. I think it's S tier. Okay. Do you have any issues with that or? No, I mean, you, that's... you play Lakota more than I do. I, well, not really. You did. Um... But yeah, I mean, I, I haven't really played Lakota since they've been changed a lot. But that's what, you know, the classic Lakota comp is early on anyways, is there's always either going to be Axe Riders or Bow Riders in your face. Yeah. Uh, from, from a very early, and, and you get the two shipments of them too in H2, so that's helpful. The Axe Rider is everything the Ulan wants to be, where it has higher attack than the Hussar, but it's also not fragile as shit. <laughs> and then it also moves faster, too, because of the Explorer. Like, that's, fucking yeah, hell. that's true. Uh, and then it, yeah, probably, it probably has up the there in S. capability to move even faster on TPs, too. Yep, with the right cards. All right, let's, uh, so let's throw at the top here as well. Let's talk about the, 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 the triplet Crusiers. So okay. uh, there are three cursier, there are three civilizations that can train cursiers, you know, despite it being a French unique unit. <laughs> it's list, literally listed as a unique unit for France, and three civs can make them. You know, you know how it is. It's, how, it's, how, it's just how the game works now. It'd it, it be like that. Uh, and that is uh, France, Mexico, and Malta. Uh, I, I left the France flag off the base one because it is their base unit, and these ones just kind of get access to it as well. Uh, between the three, it's definitely at its best for France, and it's probably just another S tier unit. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I. Yep. No. Just. just <laughs> no more conversation needed. Throw it in S. Move on. This is the unit that you're going to be stopping making the Hussar for, except maybe if you're lower on resources, you might still make Hussar for France. But um, it, once you get to H three, but you know they benefit from all the same combat cards that we gushed about with with Hussar with the thoroughbreds and all of the combat cards. But they have a they they are the big beefy boy type with area of effect, and uh, they goddamn are they big beefy and boys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, thoroughbreds making them cheaper is so nice. All right, Mexico and Malta. Uh, Mexico. Let's do Mexico first. Uh, these guys are one of the the, the army cards, the legion cards, uh, and uh, you can only train them out of forts, which sucks. You also only get like a shipment of five of them in H three, which is uh, 
a little rough. You know, it's about the same as the Tanu one shipment, but like, you know, it's only it's only five stars. It's not a crazy amount. It is like a, a solid amount considering. I think France's H3 Hussar card is three Hussars, but it is a Cursier card is three Cursiers, but you know, when you're paying a thousand goddamn res for a shipment, you expect a little bit more than two extra Hussars. And you're just paying for that tradeability, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I personally don't find these guys particularly great, just because they, they you have to train them out of fits. Uh, I think you know you're better off just sticking with the Chinako. Yeah, that's that's another problem. Is it's completely outclassed by the Chinako. Oh. I think it's probably another one of these D tier units. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a Mexico player do that. I've use them. I've seen it once. All right, now the multi here on the other hand is a slightly different story. Um, these guys, you know, they at least, uh, they, they train from, uh, commanderies, which you can make a hell of a lot more of than the fort, than you can forts. Uh, they also train faster because the forts, uh, the, the, the fort specific units have a train penalty on them. Uh, not so with the commandery. Uh, the commandery can also teleport units, so that's really cool. Like, you know, there's so many more benefits to being able to train them out of the commandery. Uh, best of all, the shipment that you get of them is actually big. It's a really big shipment. Um, you get, I think, 11 Carissier. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You have to pay 1,500 wood for it, which is really expensive on one hand, but on the other hand, like, wood is one of the few... Re it is, like, one of Malta's fastest gathering resources. Like, you're not going to have an issue affording 1,500 wood with Malta. You know, you're, especially because you're gonna be making you're, you're gonna be making commanderies and outposts all over the goddamn map, uh, which will which will boost your uh, like you're not gonna have any issues getting needing to afford the shipments. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the other things. It's it's one of the things that pairs super well with uh, the the opry. You know, the, the opry costs the the same amount of wood. So we'll talk about these units like right after each other. Uh, I think it's definitely better than the Mexico, if nothing else, for the fact that you get fucking 11 of these guys when you send the ship in. It is locked to age 4, uh, so there is that. But you know what? It's actually got some usefulness, you know? It, it's actually got some usefulness. I've actually even trained these guys a couple of times in, in late games, and I can't say the same about Mexico, so... Uh, put H them in C. Yeah, we'll put them in C. Uh, let's see. I want to talk about the Russian and Malta Opries now. Okay. Uh, which one do you want to talk about first? Doesn't matter. Let's go with the normal Russian Opry then. Okay. Alright, so the Opry is a fun unit because it loses to every other unit on this goddamn list in combat. Yeah. Even the Lancers. Despite yes. it being a bonk type. It has low HP and it has low damage, but it has two things going they for us. Are the incredibly niche, uh, very specific use case uh, unit that you had? Like they're useless unless you're using them for like two purposes. Well, one purpose. Yeah. Uh, destroy buildings and kill villagers. Yeah, and they have a high. Which kind of really kind of go use. hand in hand. They are the late game raid unit, and that's that's it. <laughs> yeah, they are. They have really high seats, and they have a settler multiplier, and that's all you need from the unit. Uh, now, Russia does. They, they are H three locks, which can be a little rough for for Russia. Uh, since uh, uh, well, the sieve again would be broken if you could make them an H two. Yeah, but I'm saying you know a lot of Russias tend to stay in H two for a while. Yes. And that's okay. Yeah, and that, that's fine. You know, it's it's better than Malta's H four lock. You know, for sure. Um, but yeah, the, the, the there's not too many upgrade cards that affect these guys either. Same with Malta. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're they're, they're kind of a weird case unit. I think they belong in the B tier because they serve a purpose and they serve it really really well. To a point where it's like it, they are way ahead of their field in terms of doing their job, but they do a very niche job. The, simply put, if you're facing Russia and you go to a, and and both of you end up in age three, you have to expect Opries. Yeah. Like, you just have to because they're a good unit. Like everything else below, you might not see. 
but you kind of have to expect Opries if you're facing a Russia. All so right. that's why that's why they belong in C or B. So on uh, now to talk about the Malta Opry. I'm going to say something that may be a little controversial in the comments, and maybe even here with you as well. Okay. I think the Malta Obri is better than the Russian Obri. Why do you think that? Uh, well, for for a couple reasons. You know, they have a couple bonuses over the Russian Obri. For one thing, they do Shadow Tech, even though they are blocked till age four, so that you know they you know it's kind of like a an equalizer, maybe not, maybe, maybe not, you know, it is nice to be able to have them in H3. Uh, but one of the things that I love about Opries, first of all, you get the, a shipment of 13 of them in H4, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a huge, like, haha, I have Opries now, big button, just, you know, like, haha, that that shipment can win you the game right then and there if you're if you're lucky or know how to use it well. Uh, but the other thing is that the Opry is not a standard multi unit. And as such, a lot of players are not going to be expecting Opries, even if they spot it in your deck, because it is, you know, on paper, a very expensive shipment for everybody except for Malta, really, and maybe India. Uh, but, you know, because it's not a standard, uh, you know, when you go against, as you were saying, when you go against Russia and you go into the H3, you need to expect Opries, right? But I found that Opries ends the games for me all the time as Malta because I'm going so heavy on the infantry and making like sentinels and hospitalers and whatnot, and they think I'm going to keep doing that. And then suddenly there's an army of 20 Opries to the north of them, and they're like, where the hell did this come from? And it ends the game before they can react. And uh, I, I think the surprise factor alone is it makes them more than worth it, not to mention they just shadow tech into H5, which is great. So yeah, that's my thought process. Okay. It's not terrible i mean i think the fact that you get him in age three is kind of better but yeah it is uh i definitely think that the for russia I, I i think overall i would rank the the malta opries higher than russia and i also think that the malta opries are the best tongue shipment that malta has access to of all of their tongue shipments like oh the, the russia one is by far the best <laughs> okay so where are you putting them? Uh, A2. Put them up here. Oh, really? Yes. Really? Oh yeah. I these guys are a game. This this is a game ending shipment right here. If you can, but remember, you have to get to age four. Which isn't too big of an issue for Malta. They have a they they have a very strong economy. Yeah, but like, you can't like. Isn't that part of the thing? Right? Is like the game has to. I don't know. I wouldn't put him. I would put him in B tier. Okay. We'll, we'll keep him at the bottom of A then. I definitely don't think they are equivalent to these units here. Like these units are far better than mm -hmm. than the Opry. But I think the Opry. And I, I think that statement alone means they need to be in B. <laughs> I think they are. They, they are the very like bottom of A. All right, what's next? Uh, let's see here. Let's talk about uh, Tushunki Prowlers. How about that? Another okay. Lakota unit. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Tushunki Prowler? You play you play Lakota more than I do. I I literally don't play Lakota. You, you play I more than I do. N no, I don't. Not anymore. But you used to, and that means you played them more than I do. I. Uh, I don't. I have no idea. I wouldn't. I didn't even use these units. I played them so little that I don't even. I didn't even like. I didn't even really use these. Okay. Uh, so well, Tushinki Prowler, Stealth Cavalry. Uh, they they get stronger the more of them you have, which is pretty cool. Uh, they recently got changed. A well, lot recently, several months ago, uh, they got changed that they are age four locked instead of age three units, which is kind of weird. Uh, and because they also like, I feel like they weren't especially like. I think they dropped their build limit too, didn't they? Yeah, something like that. Or they they moved the build limit card for them to H four or something like that. Uh, but it's kind of weird because I feel like you know they were not premier Lakota units anyways, and now they're H four, 
okay, I guess. They have really high siege from my understanding though, right? I don't know. Great. No, no clue. <laughs> uh, the, the thing about these guys that makes them special is that they are cavalry that can go stealth. What a horrifying prospect. You know that moment where you're chopping a tree in the middle of a vast open field with perfect vision around you, and then somebody raises up from the brush riding a horse? <laughs> That's the Tushunki Prowler. Now, now I'm just in, in, um, imagining, like, a horse on its knees just, like, crawling through the tall grass with the dude landing, like, sitting on top of it, like, laying flat on its neck. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing more horrifying in concept and prospects than a Tushunki Prowler. In practice, though, you just set up some outposts and it's fine. <laughs> keep your keep your explorer next to your military. You know that's kind of stuff, that kind of stuff. Uh, especially if the nurse to stealth, but like you know, it's also yeah, cavalry. Well. So you, by the time it's it's close enough that the stealth is like revealed, you know, there's not much you can do to get away. <laughs> it's true. Speedy boys, but you know, age four locks, not insane stats. Uh, not CT. not great, not great uh, by themselves or in yeah. small numbers, which doesn't help. I feel like the step rider is probably more useful than the Tishinki Prowler. Uh, maybe maybe we should put these in D tier, here. top of D. Sure. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's finish off the multi units. Multi lancers, they are very unspecial. Uh, you get a shipment of like ten of these guys in age three, which is really good. Um, but like, you you do have to send a shipment for them, and that is something that the hussar doesn't have to say. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, again, it's one of those things where you see the you you don't see that unit too often at uh, our elo so i feel like span glance is probably one of the relatively more common cards uh, that is sent for the the the, the, the multis i mean anymore malta just goes like bow pike and and i don't know i mean not so much anymore because they, they've been buffing sentinels and nerfing crossbows well uh, every malta game i've spectated they've gone bow pike so yeah, well, that's because most Malta players don't know how to play Malta. Except the Malta crossbow is one of the best units in the game. I mean, we're getting sidetracked here, but... <laughs> like, Bow Pike is one of the best unit comps for Malta. Yeah, that doesn't mean they know how to play Malta. That means they know how to they know how to do the most optimal thing, and that's it. Where's the creativity? That's where my channel comes in. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Creativity doesn't always equal wins. Hashtag polar bear fast industrial. All right, next. Hey, the polar bear fast industrial is a good. No, we we you can't just say next year. We need to talk about this. We're going on this tangent. Don't you dare, you know, disrespect the polar bear fast industrial. With that strategy is our baby, okay? And it is damn good. It's not great, but it's good. <laughs> And we're back. <laughs> All the entire 15 minute rant just got cut out, but you know what? It's okay. We're back talking about uh, heavy cavalry tier lists. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I love, I, you know, I love the PBFI. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, let's talk about Tacola soldiers. Just round off Lakota. Okay. Uh, uh, formerly known as a dog soldier, you get them from big buttons and shipments. And uh, and, and and yeah, dancing for I say dancing. You don't dance for them anymore. You you commune for them, but <laughs> uh, that sounds weird. Yeah. <laughs> You ceremonialize them into existence. You you commune them into existence. The yeah, fuck? from the community plaza. You chat them into existence <laughs> casually with your citizens in the middle of town. They just spawn out of nowhere. Like, oh my uh, god, did you see what happened to Diane? <laughs> <laughs> you, I, uh, look, I feel so bad for her husband. I mean, to have something like that happen to him is, is just unthinkable for Diane. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have 
having so much fun with Lakota today. <laughs> like that sound effect I've been doing. That was good. Okay, so the Takoa soldiers. These guys shatter tech every age because, you know, they better if you're getting them through shipments or for or through plazas only. Um, these guys are like bonker cavalry, but with lancer bolt suppliers. They are like insanely high stats. They're super yes. tanky, they have super high damage, and then they have the infantry bolt supplier on top of it. Like, there's nothing stopping these guys. You need goons in order to stop these guys. Uh huh. Uh, and even then, they outspeed goons with the explorer's like speed boost. So, lol. Uh, Rip you. Now, they are very restricted, but they are game enders, potentially. Uh, I think they are, like, tip top A, personally. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Good they're enough. quite S tier. You know, they're not trainable under normal circumstances. Have uh, we gone over the Rifle Rider? The Rifle Rider I went over in the Dragoon tier list, and I'm not going to be including it here because although it does have the heavy infantry tag, it functions more so as a game. Okay. Uh, now, is a shipment-only heavy cavalry unit that I think does belong in the S-tier is probably the Spahi. Yes. Uh, and, you know, the Tacoma Soldier is really good. It's really strong. It has the potential to end games. Spahi do it reliably. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah. The fact that you can train uh, reliably get more of them after your shipments are up gives How? the... You can? What? Uh, the Tacola, the, the the sorry, uh, the Tacola soldier. Oh, okay. Um, gives it the edge of the Spahi, but the Spahi's just better. Yeah, the Spahi's got three fucking area of effect, and you can't quite beat that. It's also got like a billion HP to boot, and just like the Tacola soldier, it also still has like bonking cavalry levels of damage. Yeah. In addition to all of its well, area, that of area of effect. Well, the area of effect is... And insane. it regenerates HP when it's not in combat? Like, fuck, dude. <laughs> These units are insane. If I, I've had games where, like, I've, I've thrown wave after wave of anti-cavalry and then just barely not killed any of the three Spahi shipment that my opponent sent, and then he just keeps them out of sight for, like, two minutes and they come back full health. It's awful. It's awful. Terrible. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Speaking of Ottomans with good fucking cavalry units, let's talk about the Dolly. The the Delhi. Same thing. Uh, Delhi is probably a tier. Yeah, I, I mean agree. that's my initial initial response, initial thought. Uh, they, don't have they, the they, most... they gave Ottoman a hussar that gave him a bit the ability to uh, well and first of all before the patch it was like deli raids were just the end of you because they had such high attack speed and such high damage which has been nerfed a little bit thank god yeah but, and, uh, and but such definitely high still speed, which has also been nerfed def definitely still a tier so they casually just took away Ottoman's Royal Guard Hussar and gave them a Royal Guard Cavalry unit that's like the Hussar, but with slightly more damage and slightly more speed. Because why not? You know? Yep. And it just kind of, it, they just made the Hussar better as a baseline stat unit, which is really hard to do, I might add, because the Hussar is a really, really strong unit in base stats. And they just casually just did it with the dolly head. Now, like, dollies are one of the most common things that you'll see Ottoman players go for. Ottomans yep. ha are, tend to be really annoying because they either monocomp jans, monocomp obus gunners, monocomp cavalry, and it all works. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Ottoman. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> uh, uh, S tier sieve. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. They are, uh, they are, Ottomans are super annoying, and the Dolly is the prime example of that. It's just, they don't have very many combat cards, they don't need them, because they're just baseline better than Hussars. Yeah, and, yes. And faster. Yep. Alright. Uh, agreed. Uh, let's go over the a couple of Chinese units here, the Iron Flail and the Meteor Hammer. Uh, I feel like both of those are probably very good. I don't know if they belong top of B or bottom of A, but they're in A somewhere. But yeah, they're so they're... The, these two. These two units have something going for them in the Chinese army that 
uh, I that I actually like. Uh, they um, I complain all the time about banner armies and that you can't like mono comp one type of unit. Iron Flail and Meteor Hammer are the exception to this because they are both heavy cavalry units and they are paired Wait. together in a banner army, which means you can get a banner army of just heavy cavalry. Which is amazing, you know. You can't do that with skirmishers, you can't do that with pikes, you can't do that with step riders of any kind, but you can do it with heavy cav. Yeah. Uh, now the Iron Flail is like a really weak version of a Curacier. And the Meteor Hammer is uh, rather unique. It is, um, I think it's better than the Iron Flail, despite the fact that the Iron Flail is, uh, it has better co baseline combat stats, but uh, the, the Meteor Hammer has a ranged attack that does melee damage, uh, which is pretty cool. The, the, I hate units that do that, by the way. But because the reason, it, the reason it's super cool is because it allows you to fight artillery uh, from range. They are, they are functionally better, than like every Dragoon in the game, even with the Dragoon multipliers, uh, because they just do melee damage from range. Uh, and I still hate units that do that. <laughs> <laughs> it it makes no sense, like the Shadow Warrior, like why? What do you mean the Shadow Warrior? Or, um, what is it? The, um, there's another unit that does range, that does melee unit from range. It's an Ethiopia unit, isn't it? Oh, I know what you're thinking of. Um, it's a native unit. Uh, the Sudanese Dervish. Yes, the Dervish. That's uh, stupid. And then like the Bolas Warrior with range sta range snare. I hate that too. Like, I hate it. It's dumb. I don't <laughs> think it belongs in the game. It just uh, doesn't make sense. The the Yurumi warrior the the Yurumi for India does range damage and melee. It was kind of interesting. Yes, also dumb. <laughs> it set a precedent because it existed in Legacy, so whatever. So did this. Been I in know. the game for fifteen years now. At this point, still dumb. Anyways, but yes. Uh, the, the Meteor Hammers, you know, they're, they're kind of meh in terms of actual combat ability against normal units, but the fact that they are functionally better than, like, every Dragoon in the game is, like, I, I think propels them far above the Iron Flail. I, I think the, the Meteor Hammer is, like, up here, and the Iron Flail is, like, right here. All right. For me, this is really high for Chinese units, because I normally hate banner armies, but the fact that these are paired together and they're both heavy cavalry is mwah, chef's guess. I like it. All right, uh, Desert Warriors. These are for the African and Ethiopian civs. It is the siege cavalry that um, uh, we, we are. We are also going over these in the outlaw tier list. And spoiler alert, we don't think very highly of them. <laughs> Uh, they are cheaper than Hussars, but, you know, they, even though they do siege damage, they don't really functionally do, like, much more damage. In fact, sometimes they even do less damage than Hussars. Because uh, they, used, they used to do 30 damage, uh, siege damage, but now they just do 26. And so, yeah, here's, here's a primary issue that I have with these units. So, take, take a Hussar, right? What's, what's a standard Musketeer's me uh, melee resist? 20%, right? Mm-hmm. That's 6 damage off of the Hussar's 30. That's 24 damage, right? This guy does 26 Siege. It gets around that. You get a 2 damage bonus off of off of fighting Musketeers. That's great. You think, well, cool, that means this unit is slightly better than the Hussar, right? And it's like, well, no. Because you really, realistically, want to be using this guy against Skirmishers anyways, right? And when you're fighting Skirmishers, who have range resistance, how much damage does the Hussar do? All 30. And this guy's sitting here doing 26. And the Hussar also has more HP. The only advantage to these guys is that... And these guys cost, like, three or four pop. So the only advantage that these guys have going for them is that they are slightly cheaper. They're, like, 120 coin or something like that. Which is still, like, 50% more coin, but it's without the food cost compared to a Hussar. So there's, like, no purpose to these guys. Even when you compare them yeah. versus just basic cavalry units. Sure. 
sure. I, I, I do still think they hold a purpose, though, uh, because they are going to be a very solid unit when you are going for outlaw strategies. You know, as it, you, the, especially when but you compare them to like the Shadow Warrior when it comes to. They're not out. We're, we're not counting them as outlaws for this unit. Well, they are outlaws, but they're just. We're, we are counting them as like the Ethiopia specific unit. Okay. And, you know, Ethiopia does go with outlaw builds sometimes, where they go with their guaranteed access for outlaw units that, that they get, which. For reference, for we are not considering the Ethiopia and Af and Hausa uh, trainable access to their outlaws for the actual outlaw tier list. Mm -hmm. So this is specifically under the the we are specifically looking at this under the precedent of Ethiopia or Hausa considering doing outlaws in this because we are not doing that in the outlaw tier list. It'll make more sense when the outlaw tier list actually comes out. But yeah, I don't think very highly of these guys. I definitely think they're probably better for Ethiopia and Hausa than they are for the Euro and African civs, just because, you know, they at least don't have a Hussar to compete with. But, you know, Ethiopia has the Shadow Warrior, which is still pretty solid in in Age 2, which is pretty which is you know, pretty damn solid in Age 2. And Hausa has the Raider, which is very solid in Age 2. So even then, you know, you're only going to be building these guys as a support to like Desert Warriors or Desert Archers. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see here. I uh, want to do the Raider next for... Uh, let's do the Raider and Lafiti. Sure. Alright, what are your thoughts on the uh, on the Raider? Uh, I've seen them used very effectively recently. Uh, I'd, I'd probably they belong in, in V somewhere. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, you can mass a lot of them pretty early i mean maybe you put them at in a just because of that you can just get a very large mass really early and and they're pretty effective at their job or maybe they just belong in b i'm not sure but that's so these guys are uh, that seems cash. to be what how's a the how's the players that i've watched at at our elo like to use raiders yeah. very effectively so these guys are one pop cav they're kind of like cossacks However, they're pretty much better than Cossacks in every which way. Uh, and they also actually have really good Siege, like the Step Rider. I think they have like 24 Siege. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're good. And Hausa also, unlike the Cossack, Hausa also has like tons of upgrade cards for them. Uh, like, I, I think these, these guys are definitely an A-tier unit. Uh, I think they're probably could, like right here. I could get behind that. And then the Lafiti Knight is, uh, it's like a Hussar, but more tanky and with less damage. That's what it is. It's it's super tanky Hussar, uh, but one specifically one, they are H three locked, but you can send a card to make them available in H two uh, for Hausa. But one of the things that is really great with these guys with Hausa is that uh, you can get a card that gives them area of effect. Big deal, really big deal. Uh, imagine just turning a Hussar into a Curseer. That's what these. That, that's what that card does. And they're yeah. still two pop. Like so, you know, fucking hell. These guys. I think these are S here. I think Lafiti Knights are insane. And before they got nerfed, like they were so good. Yeah. Yeah. They really they've, were. they've they've anything that's been nerfed and still sees plenty of play is probably S tier. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's talk about one that I thought was S tier in previous lists, but I don't necessarily think so now. Uh, the Naginata Rider. Okay. I previously kind of thought of the Naginata Rider as the S tier, the, the S tier Chinako, but slightly worse, you know. Uh, and it is, that is still relatively true. It is the Chinako, but worse. Uh, it has a, it has very similar base stats to the Chinako in almost every which way. And very similar multipliers as well. The only thing it doesn't have is the Chinako's uh, ca cavalry multiplier. And so the, although it performs, you know, relatively well against Hussars, it's still going to, like, lose to them. You know? Yeah. Uh, 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 well, in, in part of what kind of knocks them down in terms of rating for me is that Japan players just don't really use them. Yeah, you're you're more likely to go with a barracks in H two as Japan. Yeah, and they're expensive. I mean, Japan's eco is kind of 
uh, slow to take off. So you you know you got you got to you got to get your shrines up, which means you're chopping wood, and uh, you know it costs coin. So you can put your shrines on coin, yes, but then your shrines go up slower, and so it's like a trade-off. So most you know most Japanese players don't go for Naginata at least early on, and even once you know you get to mid-game, you you've got Ashigaru cards. So you you do have Naginata cards. Oh, you can upgrade them with. Is it Bloody Harvest? It might be Bloody Harvest. I don't remember the name of the card off the top of my head, but um, Naginata are good, but a lot of Japan players will just, you know, they also... especially in teams, Mono Kamba, Shigaru, or Yumi, and, and be just fine. Uh, they also, Japan also doesn't have any access to a Criolos equivalent, correct? What does that do? Uh, it, Criolos is the the card that Spain and Mexico has that gives their lancers an extra multiplier against sellers uh, against infantry. Uh, Criolos or Caballeros? Caballeros, my bad. Uh, no, um, they do have a upgrade card, but I think it just increases their damage. Yeah, yeah, it's not overall. The, it's not the crazy multiplier one that yeah lan that lancers and and uh, quatreros get. See, yeah. I definitely think they're still a very strong cavalry unit because, you know, if you see a mass of Chinakos and a mass of Naginatas and you have skir uh, if you have if you have a ba uh, mass of skirmishers and you see a mass of Chinakos or a mass of Naginata, it doesn't matter which one you go into. You're fucked either way. And yeah. they still both and both of them still fight relatively well against Hussars. The difference is Chinakos can beat Hussars and, and Naginatas don't quite get there. They come close. You know. Yeah. Uh, I th I think they're like right here, top of A, uh, less sure. than the Tacoa. Yeah. Less than France, right here. This is a good spot. Mm -hmm. Are you better than the Sweden SR? Right okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, the Zolly. <laughs> 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 Are we are we positive with our placement now? No, but you know we'll, we'll keep going. Okay. All right. Uh, Royal Horsemen for Dutch. The, this is one of their new access units with the with the uh, Dutch States Army card, which means you can get these guys trainable from stables. Just really cool. Um, I don't know why bothered though. Um, the, one of the advantages to being able to train out of a stable instead of a tavern is that you can train multiple batches at the same time. Yeah, you know, which is cool. It's a very yeah. important thing. Um, these guys cost 400 coin apiece. You need 2,000 coin for a batch of five. You are never going to need more than one stable to train them out of at a time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's no point to it. Uh, they are H4 locks. They're, they are stat wise, they do beat the, the, the Hussar. They're like a mercenary Chris here. They got 900 base HP, which is pretty cool. Uh, only 30 base attack though in H4, which is kind of surprising, but uh, they're really tanky. Uh, I don't think they're great though, just because they are age four locks, and you know even and you know even Dutch is going to have trouble affording batch after batch of four hundred coin units. You know, uh, correct. Dutch are really good, famous for ha being able to mass lots of artillery, but you know even in peak you know, Dutch artillery masses, when they uh, they're, they're only going to have like ten maybe fifteen cannons, but you know if you're making these guys, you're going to want a fair a fair few more than that. You know, because you want a big army. Yeah. Because they ain't no cannon. And 10 of 15 of these guys is scary, don't get me wrong. But I'd rather fight the cannons. Or sorry, but I'd rather fight these than the cannons. Because these at least have to close in with me and I can make walls to avoid them, you know? It'll be interesting to see what kind of strategies develop as people wrap their head around the new Dutch cards. Yeah. For now, uh... Uh, un until I see proof otherwise, I definitely think the the Royal Horseman is is not preferable compared to just heavy artillery spam or like horse artillery spam. Uh, I think yeah. it, it still has its place. I think it's still solid. You know, especially you can always go to H five with the mercenary contractor that does require H five though. Uh, and I think I think they're like right here. Okay. Maybe maybe you do a little bit of this action. All right, now that we have three weird, goofy units left, the Aroma Warrior. Let's start with the Aroma Warrior for Ethiopia. What a turnaround this unit has had. Um, this unit used to be garbage, straight up. 
and now it ain't garbage. Uh, it used to be a three pop, like, cursier costing levels of, of expensive, uh, cursier costing unit levels of expensive unit that, uh, basically was, uh, basically was like an early game hack and pellet, where it was like a heavy cow, but also not really a heavy cow, and it was weird, it was a bad unit. Now it is explicitly a heavy cav unit that has a charged musket attack, rather than like a hack, rather than like a Harka booster type deal where you have like a short range shot. Uh, so these guys have one attack speed and really high attack, and they only cost two pop, and they're a fair bit cheaper than they used to be now. Uh, these guys are like super hussars with charged mu with a charged musket action on top of it. Like, if you get, uh, the, the, they're equal in pop numbers, and if you get an equal-sized mast of Hussars and Aroma Warriors, the Aroma Warriors will shred them to pieces. That said, the, even though they are crazy pop efficient for what, they, for what their stats provide, uh, the big disadvantage to the Aroma Warrior is that they are very expensive, so you're not going to see them for a very, uh, like, see big masses of them for a very long time. Uh, because I um, in addition to them being expensive, uh, the Ethiopian Eco ain't no France Eco. Because <laughs> they're going to their, their resources are also going to be mixed with um, influence, and these guys people, don't cost people any are exp uh, experimenting with uh, Ethiopia Boom type builds though, so we might see these in the future mm -hmm. getting a little bit more. Um, Visibility. Yeah, for sure. I think they have a, a one or a few combat cards as well to their names. So that's nice. Uh, I think the Aroma Warrior is. I think people haven't quite figured out how to like best use them yet, but I think they are very solid units. Uh, and it, uh, until people figure out how to best use them, I'm not going to put them any higher than B. But for now, I think they are a very solid top of B tier. All right. Right, and that leaves us with the Papal Lancer and the Mahal Lancer. Which one do you want to talk about first? Papal Lancer, sure. Papal Lancers! I fucking love these guys. They are very good. Yeah. Remember how we said the biggest strength of the Italy Hussar was that it pads out and your your Papal Lancer mass? Yeah. yeah. This is this unit is the reason that the Italy Lancer is in B tier. Let's just say that. Um... Available as early in age 2 through use of the Broken Lance Company, but trainable starting age 3 and above. These guys have, what, 700 base HP or something like that? Something dumb like that? Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, and they have deflection too, so as long as you keep them together, then I'll end with your other units and they just yeah. tank. These these guys are like 700 HP, they have deflection aura, which means they absorb damage from units around them onto themselves. Which is great because they're so tanky. Uh, and then they also got, like, an infantry multiplier with really high base damage. Like, these guys are nuts. You can only get them in batches of three, uh, and through using the, um, and through using your, uh, cathedral. But let me tell you, dude, it is worth it. And they got, they got that cavalry combat upgrade as well. Like, these guys are so nuts. Uh, like, in terms of the, uh, Basilica... And your and training units from the Basilica. There are two units in particular that make the, the Basilica weight particularly worth it if you want to make your army, especially in the lake. And those are the Papal Lancer and the Zwa and the Papal Zwave. And I think the Papal Lancer, honestly, I almost want to put it in S tier except for its availability. Uh, yeah, I think A is probably where they belong. Yeah, we'll put them like right here. Like, their availability is the only thing that sets them back. Oh yeah, and once you get to age 4, you can uh, increase their train speed and give them a charged action, because why not? Don't forget to mention that one. God, the charged actions are so good. Oh yeah. And then lastly, but certainly not least, because as we mentioned, that is sour, <laughs> is the Mahout Lancer. Uh, the Mahout Lancer has, you know, a ton of base HP. Uh, it's a Lancer and a Cursier mixed together, because why not, you know? Yep. And it's got the infantry multipliers, and it's got the area of effect. Uh, it is so tanky. They are food wood costing, which is rough, but India is a wood economy-based civilization, so 
it's really not that bad. Uh, in addition, they also uh, it, like I, I, they they also are part of the elephants, the elephant class of units. Which, uh, for those not in the know, elephants are the single most upgradable unit class in the entire game. Uh, India has more upgrades for elephants than even Spain has for some of their units. It's insane how many how many different upgrades there are for India, and even the ones, even a bunch of ones that people don't even like really know about that are upgrades for for elephants or don't even think about, like derivative martial arts, uh, or or like the the, the church tech that increases that that increases uh, explore stomps also increases like elephants by another twenty percent. It's nuts. Like, the amount of upgrades India has for, for Mahouts and other elephants is, is insane, and people have no idea, and it's it's so funny. Uh, I have monocomps for these guys in team games before, and it is so funny to watch. Uh, these guys end up with, like, 120 siege in the very late game. It's so funny. To just yeah, see them headbutt a building into destruction. Definitely A tier. I agree. For sure. You also get amazing pops of these guys through really, really good shipments. And the Naginata gets shifted down again. I, I, I definitely think the the fact that they are H3 locked makes the Naginata, it gives the Naginata a very big advantage. Hmm. I think they're right there. Um, like, you, you can get these guys from your age-ups in H3 onwards uh, through use of the Chalman Arcade. You get really good shipments of Mahouts in ages 3, uh, three and 4 uh, by spending food. Uh, you can get amazing pops of these guys on on units, uh, and you can always you can always trade them if you need to. Like they're the, the Mahouts are so good. The Mahouts are so good, guys. All right, I think that closes out our list. Do you have any changes that you want to make? Uh, nope. Okay. Then thank you so much for watching, gentles and ladymen. Have a great day and goodbye. Still, my heart beats again and again. I'm always searching for a love with no sense within my head. Till that day when I see that I'm mad, the most amazing.